Forgotten God TV. I am Elisa Rodriguez. I would like to um, talk about today on this video theologians, theology, and my belief that the theologies that we have today are changing. And that um, because I'm, I'm questioning the doctrine of the Trinity, it is a doctrine that has persisted since the fourth century. Um, it was introduced into the church. And you might say, well, I understand that you yourself are questioning the doctrine of the Trinity, but why do the theologians, um, the scholar theologians, the, you know, doctors of theology not agree with you? And why have we not heard anything from them? So today, we're going to look at that. We're going to look at what modern theology says and what their comments are. Um, and I'd like to read just a little the introduction to this section in my book because I want you guys to, to I like the way it says it and I, I want to express it to you guys. So I'm going to read it to you. <clears throat> I apologize if it's uh, a little bit dry but the title is uh, A Changing Theology. And it says when we see the need for change it is usually when we find an error or the loss of usability of an item. For example, when we get our tires changed, it's usually because we notice something about the tire that indicates the need for change. The same is true for a windshield. If we see a crack, although the window is still usable, it will eventually get bigger and need to be addressed. When we examine doctrines in the church, are there indications that something may need to change. I do believe that there are small cracks in the doctrine of the Trinity, signs that there may be need uh, for a time of re-examination. Biblical theologians study the word as deeply as they can. Theologians can dry, uh, have a drive and a desire to seek out what the Bible truly teaches. One of the things I like about theologians is they like to follow the evidence and they are very thorough. Non-Catholic churches have grown and expanded throughout the church, throughout the United States. Seminaries and Bible schools have proliferated around the world. The study of the Bible is no longer limited to just a few. Android OS is open source meaning anyone can look at the source code and modify it in any way, shape, or form. And people regularly develop the software to improve the capabilities. There are forums where thousands upon thousands of people work together to solve problems in software. And I believe that the church is coming to the point where the entire church can join the discussion on doctrine. As we all allow the many viewpoints and input of members of the church, our biblical doctrine will be formed into what God had intended. Theologians previously were the only ones involved in doctrinal formation. What is going to happen in the future, that is, is that everyone in the church is going to participate and has a right to participate and contribute to doctrine. So what we're going to look at is the, the cracks or the hints that there is something wrong with our theology. So what we're going to look at is the comments made by theologians. Because I'm saying there's a problem with the doctrine of the Trinity. We're seeing that the church is capable of making a mistake from the video, the first video. The second video identified what the doctrine of the Trinity is. And now we're going to look at theologians, people who have studied, who are doctors, um, in theology and see what their comments are and see if they agree that there might be something wrong with the doctrine of the Trinity. So here's what noted scholars have said concerning the doctrine of the Trinity. The Trinitarian Millard J. Erickson, he is a research professor of theology at Southwest um, Baptist Theological Seminary, Southern Baptist, um, in his book on the Trinity, God in Three Persons is what it's entitled, says, 
The doctrine in many ways presents strange paradoxes. It was the very first doctrine dealt with systematically by the church, yet is still one of the most misunderstood and disputed doctrines. Further, it is not clearly or explicitly taught anywhere in scripture, yet it is widely regarded as a central doctrine, indispensable to the Christian faith. That is page 11 through 12. So, um, Millard J. Erickson, who is a theologian, and he's a Trinitarian, says, admittedly, um, the most important part that, that strikes me is that he says, quote, further, it is not clearly taught or explicitly, uh, I'm sorry, it is not clearly or explicitly taught anywhere in Scripture. That is his comment. Um, this man is the research professor of theology at a Baptist theological seminary. He's not an idiot. He's a research professor at a very well-respected seminary. He says that it is clearly, it is not clearly or explicitly taught anywhere in Scripture. Now, we stop right there and say, okay, I understand the words that came out of your mouth. The theologian, the professor of theology, said that it is not clearly or explicitly taught in Scripture. Now, let's remember Jan Hus from video one. Jan Hus died teaching that if you have a problem with doctrine between your teachers and the Bible, that you believe the Bible. And we know that doctrine is only uh, correctly interpreted or received from the Bible. Um, this man, who is a professor of theology, or who was a professor of theology, I'm not sure if he's still alive or anything about him, really, besides these quotes, uh, is that he, uh, a professor of theology, says that it is not clearly or explicitly taught anywhere in Scripture. Now, do you want to believe and accept and fight for and defend a scripture, I'm sorry, a theology, that a professor of theology says is not clearly or explicitly taught in scripture? So he is saying, essentially, I'm not trying to put words in his mouth, but what I'm gathering from what he's saying is that it is not in the Bible clearly or explicitly. Okay? But it is taught everywhere. Okay? This is not a, a crazy man. This is not um, a man with no uh, qualifications behind his um, who he is. So that's one crack. You know, when you're thinking about theology and uh, thinking about doctrine and whether something's true or not, you want it to have the support of the Bible. I mean, this sounds retarded to have to say. But it's true. When you want to believe a doctrine, you want to say, hey, it's right here in Scripture. But it is not. According to this man, who is a professor, and he's a Trinitarian. He is a Trinitarian. He is not a non-Trinitarian. He believes the Trinity. But he's admitting that it is not clearly or explicitly taught anywhere in Scripture. The book is called God in Three Persons. The man's name is Miller J. Erickson. It is on page 11 and 12. Please look it up. That is a crack in my book. Why would it say that? Why would he say that? Unless it's true. And and uh, so we're going to move on. But that's one professor of theology who agrees that there is, it is not clearly or explicitly taught in Scripture. And the basis point or the, the, the main point of all churches is to say it must be in Scripture. It must be in Scripture to be a doctrine, to be a theology, to be uh, something that you believe. It must be in Scripture. We've taught that as Christians our whole life. But for some reason, the doctrine of the Trinity, we don't apply the same rules to the doctrine of the Trinity. And that is a problem. You want to believe the doctrine of the Trinity. And I understand that. If it was in the, doc if it was in the Bible, I would believe it too. This professor is saying that it is not clearly or explicitly taught anywhere in Scripture. Okay? 
Southwest Baptist Theological Seminary, Southern Baptist. Okay. Number two professor, Professor Shirley C. Guthrie, Jr. He's a Trinitarian scholar. Uh, in his best-selling book, Christian Doctrine, he says this, the Bible, on page 76 and 77, he says, the Bible does not teach the doctrine of the Trinity, neither the word Trinity itself, nor such language as one in three, three in one, one essence, or substance, and all three persons in biblical language. The language of the doctrine is the language of the ancient church taken from classical Greek philosophy. This man, his name is Shirley C. Guthrie, Jr. He's a Trinitarian scholar. He's a best-selling author of the book Christian Doctrine. Okay, look it up. Page 76 and 77. He says, let me read it again. The Bible does not teach the doctrine of the Trinity. Period. Start again. The Bible does not teach the doctrine of the Trinity. Period. Neither the word Trinity. Okay? So the Bible does not teach neither the word Trinity itself, nor such language as one in three, three in one, one essence, or substance, comma, and three persons is, is biblical language. He's saying that that's neither none of that is in the Bible. Nothing, none of that is in the Bible. Trinity is not in the Bible. One and three is not in the Bible. Three and one is not in the Bible. One essence is not in the Bible, or one substance is not in the Bible. Three persons is not in the Bible. This is what he's saying. Then it says. The language of the doctrine, uh, the language of the doctrine of the Trinity, the language of the doctrine is the language of the ancient church taken from classical Greek philosophy. Okay? Pages 76 and 77. So what they're saying, what, what he's saying, Shirley C. Guthrie Jr. is saying, is that the language, three and one in three, trinity, all, one substance, one essence, all of those words, all of the words come from not Jewish thought, where the church comes from, not Jewish um, viewpoints or Jewish ideas, it comes from Greek philosophy, Plato, um, where were the, all of, you know, all of the main uh, Greek philosophers. That's where those ideas come from. So if we're using that language and it's nowhere taught in the Bible, it's very interesting. It's very interesting that the language comes from Greek philosophy that's non-Christian, non-Jewish viewpoint, Greek philosophy, that, you know, Greek philosophy with all of these other paganistic ideas that come along with it, um, that's where we get the verbiage for the Doctrine of the Trinity. It's not saying that, he's not saying that the Doctrine of the Trinity came from Greek philosophy. He said the language that we use for the Trinity comes from Greek philosophy. It could be. It could not be. And I'm not saying that. I'm just telling you exactly what he's saying. Exactly what he's saying is that the language that we use did not come from the church, did not come from Jewish ideas or Jewish viewpoints or Jewishness. It came from Greek philosophy. And it was introduced, by the way, in the fourth century. Okay? It wasn't before that, it was introduced in the fourth century. Okay. Next guy. So that's, I have a problem with that. This man is a. Trinitarian scholar, not just a regular scholar, right? He is a, a man who has written a book on Christian doctrine as a whole, not just the Trinity, but he is a Trinitarian scholar, and he is well respected. In his book, Christian Doctrine, page 76 and 77, he says, 
and I'll read it one more time before I move to the next guy. The Bible does not teach the doctrine of the Trinity, period. Neither the word Trinity itself, nor such language as three and one, uh, well, I'm sorry, one and three, three and one, one essence or substance, and three persons is biblical language. The language of the doctrine of the Trinity is uh, of the ancient church taken from classical Greek philosophy. Okay. The next um, crack, see, because these, to me, in my mind, this uh, this first guy, Miller J. Erickson, saying that it's um, that uh, it's not clearly or explicitly taught in Scripture. That is a crack. It's like he's saying. You know, I'm teaching the Doctrine of the Trinity, but I want to point out there is a slight problem with the Doctrine of the Trinity, and this is it. It's like he's like just dropping a hint. Um, Shirley C. Guthrie, Jr., kind of like he's dropping a hint as well. Hey, you know what? The verbiage and the language of the Doctrine of the Trinity comes from Greek philosophy. That's another little crack. It's like a little hint that these, these uh, theologians are trying to give us. Hey, look, this kind of has a problem with it. I mean, we, we're, we're studying it, we're teaching it, I'm giving you um, what, you know, what we use to defend the Doctrine of Trinity, but I, there's a couple of little cracks there that we need to keep in mind. Then we go to these next guys, um, Trinitarians, um, Roger Olson and Christopher Hall, in their book, The Trinity. And that's what they call me. The book is entitled The Trinity. And they say this, it is understandable that the importance placed on the doctrine, on this doctrine, is perplexing to many lay Christians and students. Nowhere is it clearly or unequivocally stated in Scripture. The, the doctrine of the Trinity developed gradually after the completion of the New Testament in the heat of controversy. The full-blown doctrine of the Trinity was spelled out in the 4th century at two great ecumenical councils, Nicaea 325 A.D. and Constantinople, 381 A.D. Page 1 and page 2 of the book, The Trinity. So he admits at the very beginning, the doctrine of the Trinity developed gradually after the completion of the New Testament in the heat of controversy. He's saying that it, it developed gradually. That means that it was not originally the doctrine. Okay, so even though these guys aren't saying explicitly like what I'm saying, they agree with me because they know historically there is evidence, but they're not talking about that part. They're not talking about the, the, the glaring pile of evidence, the elephant in the room uh, of evidence proving that the doctrine of Trinity was not original doctrine. They're just saying, uh, you know, it developed over, you know, we're not going to talk about what it was before, but it developed over, you know, several years and was accepted as a doctrine later on in the 4th century. We're not necessarily going to hone in or look at or try to teach you what the original apostles and Jesus and the early church taught because we are now Trinitarians, so we're going to teach you the doctrine of Trinity. And, and I don't fault them for that. I actually thank them for giving us these hints, for giving us, you know, um, a slight hint to that there might be a problem. I believe that these men want to know the truth. And they can only give out what, you know, they're giving out truth. They're giving out the truth here. It's just that they didn't kind of explore that or explain it further. But I feel like these theologians see a problem and are just giving us the hints to the cracks and are hoping that we would examine them like we are right now and digging deeper into these anomalies in the doctrine. First of all, according to one theologian, professor, not in the Bible. Second one, the language was, was uh, the language to talk about and explain the doctrine of Trinity doesn't come from the Bible and doesn't come from Jewish understanding, it comes from the Greek philosophy. And here, he's saying that it's developed gradually over the years up until the 4th century at two ecumenical councils. So he's also saying that uh, it's nowhere is it clearly or unequivocally stated in Scripture. 
that's significant, in my opinion, for them to say, uh, not only is it all of these other things, uh, it's it's nowhere clearly or unequivocally stated in Scripture. So, and we know, we have to believe or be told the Scriptures according to what the Bible says, not according to what we want it to say, but according to what the Bible says. We're always taught that. When you're reading the Bible, if you're if you're if you're getting taught a doctrine or somebody's telling trying to tell you something about the Bible, it, you have to find it in Scripture. They have to give you support uh, in the Bible before you believe it. But for the doctrine of the Trinity, this um, this rule of obtaining doctrine is ignored for the doctrine of Trinity because these men. Um, have just said that it is not in in two great ecumenical councils in the fourth century. So they're explaining what I've been explaining. So it sounds like I'm making radical statements that have no basis or support. But so far, I have support of theological and scholarly uh, opinion. Now the next guy, his. He, he, his name may sound familiar to some of you. Professor Charles C. Ryrie, he's a respected Trinitarian evangelist, biblical scholar, in his well-known work called Basic Theology. He says this, In the second half of the fourth century, three, the, uh, three theologians from the province of uh, Cappadocia in Eastern Asia Minor gave definitive shape to the doctrine of the Trinity. Page 65. Uh, but many doctrines uh, are accepted by evangelicals as being, being clearly taught in the scripture for which there is no proof texts. The doctrine of the Trinity furnishes the best example of this. It is fair to say that the Bible does not clearly teach the doctrine of the Trinity. In fact, there is not even one proof text. If by proof text we mean a verse or passage that clearly states that there is one God who exists in three persons, that's page 89. The above illustrations prove the fallacy of concluding that if something is not proof text in the Bible, we cannot clearly teach the results. If that were so, I could never teach the doctrine of the Trinity or the deity of Christ or the deity of the Holy Spirit. That's page 90. Now, let's break this down because this man, Professor Charles C. Ryrie, uh, when I hear Ryrie, I hear Ryrie by the he is respected Trinitarian, evangelical, biblical scholar in his well-known work, Basic Theology. Okay, The book title is Basic Theology. He says, in the second half of the 4th century, okay, so that's, in the 4th century is between 300 and 400. Okay, that's the 4th century. Once you get to 400, uh, you've completed the 4th century. Then you go from 401 to 500. That would be the 5th century. So, here we go. So he says, in the second half of the 4th century, so after 350 A.D., uh, three theologians from the province of Cappadocia in Eastern Asia Minor gave definitive shape to the doctrine of the Trinity. This man, who is a biblical scholar, world-renowned biblical scholar says that three guys in 350 gave the shape and the understanding of the doctrine of the Trinity that we know today. It didn't come from Jesus. It didn't come from the apostles. It didn't come from the early church. It came from three guys in 350 or after 350. It didn't come from the Bible. It didn't come from Jesus. It didn't come from the apostles didn't come from the early church. So now, that was page 65. Now, he says, but many doctrines are accepted by evangelicals as being clearly taught in the scriptures for which there are no proof texts. The doctrine of the Trinity furnishes the best example of this. It is fair to say that, yet, that the Bible does not clearly teach the doctrine of the Trinity. Period. In fact, there is not even one proof text 
If by proof text we mean a verse or passage that clearly states that there is one God who exists in three persons. That's page 89. So in page 89 he says that there are a lot of doctrines that Christians believe uh, that are not supported by the Bible, that have no proof text. In other words, there is nowhere in the Bible that we find that teaching, kind of like um, the indulgences that um, that Martin Luther, Jan Hus, John Wycliffe, um, the you know worshiping the Pope and you know all that stuff. All of that has no biblical basis. It has no proof text. There's no Bible that says and you're supposed to pay money to save your loved ones from hell. There's no scripture that says you pray to the Pope. Those are extra-biblical beliefs, that's extra-biblical doctrine that has no support from the Bible. And it's, um, it's believed because it's believed, because they're told to believe it. So he's saying that there are many doctrines that Christians believe that have no proof texts. And he says that the best example of these of these fake doctrines that people believe without any support of the Bible is the doctrine of the Trinity. Please realize that this man is a biblical scholar. That means he has studied the Bible and he is very well respected for his knowledge and understanding of the Bible, that he has studied the Bible for long enough to be called a biblical scholar. And he says that the doctrine of the Trinity is the best example of a doctrine that we believe that has no biblical support. Okay? Let that sink in. Okay? All right. Um, and then it says, and that was on page 89 of his book, Basic Theology. Now, the last one is even more amazing. Well, <clears throat> he said that if he said, there's no proof text for the Doctrine of Trinity. And then the last part is the most amazing part. He's saying that if I had to, uh, if I, you know, if I adhere to the doctrine that we are supposed to only use the Bible for doctrine, he says, I couldn't teach the Doctrine of the Trinity. This is what he's saying. He's saying, listen, there is, if I'm to be uh, following the strict rule of only using the Bible to teach doctrine, I could not teach the doctrine of the Trinity. He's saying, the only reason that I'm teaching the doctrine of the Trinity is because I am ignoring the rule that says you're supposed to use only the Bible. Okay? And these men, and I'm telling you, these men are smart, they love God, they care about um, truth, and they're giving you hints. They're giving you hints because they know it's so hard for it, for you to swallow it. It's so hard for you to understand how big a problem this is. They're giving you small pills. They're giving you small cracks. They're giving you small pieces of information that if you grasp on and say, wait a minute, are you telling me that if you really, really, really stood by the Bible, you couldn't teach the doctrine of the Trinity. That's what you're saying. You could interview them. You could ask them. They may not explicitly say that, but it is true. It has no biblical support in the Bible. And these men, all of these men, I respect them. Why? Because they're being honest. They're doing their job. They're telling you, they're telling you the truth right here. It's just, it's veiled a little. Okay? It's kind of hidden. Now, all of these other uh, theologians and scholars and everybody else who's, who's teaching it as though it has biblical support and everything else, you guys are wrong. You need to repent and tell the truth. Yes, it is not the original doctrine. And nothing wrong with going back to the original doctrine. Okay? Nothing wrong with that. Okay, so... That guy... To me, that guy just is enough for me. But I've got another one. Uh, his name is Graham Green. He's a noted Catholic scholar. He says, uh, Our opponents sometimes claim that no, one, uh, that no belief should be held dogmatically 
which is not explicitly stated in Scripture. But the Protestant churches have themselves accepted such dogmas as the Trinity, for which we, for which there is no such precise authority in the Gospels. Okay, so what this man is saying, he's a Catholic, and he's probably, um, he probably hates hearing the complaints about, you're not supposed to pray to the Pope, you're not supposed to consider him God, you're not supposed to sing to the priests and sing to the fathers, you're not supposed to pray to Mary, you're not supposed to... None of that's found in the Bible. None of that's found in the Bible. And what is his defense? What is his defense? His defense is, well, you do it. Look, you have the doctrine of the Trinity. It has no biblical support, but you believe it. So you're going to complain that we are praying to statues, uh, and you're calling it idol worship, and we're saying that it's okay, and you guys do the same thing because there's no biblical support for the doctrine of the Trinity either. So there, be quiet. That's pretty much what he's saying. He's saying, you guys are hypocrites yourself because you guys hold to a doctrine that doesn't have any biblical support either. So before you can tell me that I can't be doing this, you need to not be doing it as well. That's not, first of all, two wrongs don't make a right. But second of all, he's defending, he's defending the uh, desire, or he's defending the Catholic Church's desire to do things that are unbiblical and worship idols, and, and do things that are not allowed by trying to humiliate and fear and, you know, just this method of, you do it too, so, you know, don't, don't get on to me about it. One reason why we should toss the doctrine of the Trinity out, even the Catholic Church knows it has no support in the Bible, and they're using it against us. We need to be truthful to God, truthful to His Word, truthful to his son, truthful to our Lord, truthful to our teachers, truthful to our children, and not perpetuate this. Okay? So, <clears throat> so, um, these are cracks that we're seeing. These are problems in the doctrine that theologians, scholars, people who have spent their lives studying the Bible have seen, and they're giving you the hints and that's what I'm calling the cracks in the theology. It's theologians who have studied this and have said, hey, look, check it out. There's a crack there. I wonder what that's there for. And they're expecting you to do the work. Figure it out. They're trying to push forward our understanding and push forward our our doctrine. And because the doctrine of Trinity is a hard nut to crack. It is a very ingrained doctrine. But they're trying to give you hints. And they're being honest. That other guy, Ryrie, was saying, hey, if, if I had to follow the, the dogma that says, or, or the rule that says I can't teach without it being in the Bible, I couldn't teach the doctrine of the Trinity, just so you know. That means it's not in the Bible. Okay. Uh, we're going to look at what, uh, now we're going to look at what um, credible sources say. Harper Collins Bible Dictionary says, um, in its 1996 edition, that the um, the formal doctrine of the Trinity, as it is defined by the Great Church Councils of the fourth and fifth centuries, is not to be found in the New Testament. Uh, Harper Collins Bible Encyclopedia of Catholicism, 1995 edition, says today, however, scholars generally agree that there is no doctrine of the Trinity as such in either the Old Testament or the New Testament. It would go far beyond the intention uh, and thought forms of the Old Testament to suppose that a late 4th century or 13th century Christian doctrine can be found there. Likewise, the New Testament does not contain an explicit doctrine of the Trinity. Okay, Encyclopedia International, 1982 edition, volume 18, page 226 says, The doctrine of the Trinity did not form part of the Apostles' preaching, as this is reported in the New Testament. Uh, New International Encyclopedia, Volume 23, page 47, uh, 477 says, The doctrine of the Trinity, the Christian faith, I'm sorry, the Catholic faith, is this, we worship one in Trinity, but there is one person of the Father, another of the Son, and another of the Holy Ghost, the glory equal, the majesty co-eternal. The doctrine is not found in its, uh, in its fully developed form in the Scriptures. Modern theology does not seek to find it in the Old Testament, and the time of the Reformation, the Protestant Church took over the doctrine of the Trinity without serious examination. 
Let me read that last line again. At the time of the Reformation, the Protestant Church took over the doctrine of the Trinity without serious examination. When the Church split from Catholic to Protestant, okay, Lutherans, Catholics, and everybody else who's not Catholic is falls into that second category of Lutherans and everything that came after. Um, it says that at that time the re of the Reformation, which is when the church is split, the Protestant church, which is us, whoever's not Catholic, um, the Protestant church took over the doctrine of the Trinity without serious examination. We should have looked at it a little bit. Um, it also says, uh, because the doctrine of Trinity is such an important part of later Christian doctrine, it is striking that the term does not appear in the New Testament. Likewise, the developed concept of three co-equal partners in the Godhead found in later creedal formation, formulations cannot be clearly detected within the confines of the canon, which is the Bible. That was Oxford Companion to the Bible, 1993, page 78. <clears throat> there is, um, I mean, I've got more pages than that here concerning, concerning the practice and theology in my book. We're not going to go through all of them. We don't have time to do all of these, um, all of these, all of these guides. My point is to try to get you to understanding that there are cracks in the doctrine. And you might say, well, you know, I understand that you are questioning the doctrine of the Trinity, that you don't like the doctrine of the Trinity, that you feel like there's something wrong with the doctrine of the Trinity, and that's fine. Everyone can have an opinion. But, first of all, I've proven that the, uh, in my first video, that we can make a mistake. And it has happened in the Jewish uh, uh, relationship with God. It can happen with the Christian uh, relationship with God. So that's possible. Uh, so the possibility is there. It exists. And uh, can happen. Um, then, on the second video, we talked about how um, what the Doctrine of Trinity clearly states. And we talked a little bit about the Council of Nicaea and things that went on after that. Now we've talked about, well, <clears throat> am I just, my, me, myself, am I just a kook? Am I crazy? And I'm just talking about stuff that doesn't make sense and just throwing stuff out there that has no biblical support by the Christian um, thought. And I've just proven that not only uh, do I have support from some of the best um, of the best out there of scholars that admit that it's not found in Scripture. Uh, if it was, if, it, if they followed the rules, they couldn't teach the doctrine of the Trinity. That it is um, the the language used to describe the doctrine of the Trinity came from Greek philosophy, okay, that it developed over time in the third, uh, in the fourth century, that three guys, um, a little after the middle of the third century, developed what is today's modern theology of the doctrine of the Trinity, that it is a, not supported in the Bible. <clears throat> and these are not guys that, you know, it's not Joe Blow that I, I know down the street. It's not a guy, you know, that I go to church with. These are guys who have spent their entire lives studying the Bible, and they are saying, eh, I'm going to teach a doctrine of the Trinity, and guess what? It wasn't the first teaching. It's not the first church's thought. It's not what was taught by the apostles. It's not what was taught by Jesus. It was not taught by the early church. It was introduced... 200 years later, 300 years later, okay? These are things you got to think about. These are the facts. These men spent their lives studying the Bible, and they're trying to drop hints to us about what, and I appreciate it. It's our job to do the rest. They're dropping hints. Look, there's cracks in this foundation. Look at the foundation. There's cracks. There's a problem here. Seek it out. Find it out. And that's what I did. So I'm going to try to help you guys understand that. But let me give a clarification. Most times when people say, okay, the doctrine of the Trinity is not right, you're proving your point. Yes, the doctrine of the Trinity is not right. What, what should I go to now? 
First of all, I want to tell you, and I want to just explain to you right now. Don't go to the other extreme, okay? There's a balance here. The other extreme is um, um, Unitarianism. Unitarianism is what uh, people believe when they say... Um, Unitarianism is where people believe that Jesus is just a man. He's just a man. He was born through Mary, and that's it. Nothing more, nothing less. That is not what the doctrine of the Trinity... I'm sorry, that's not what the original doctrine was in the church. The original doctrine, they didn't teach that Jesus was just a man, and that's it. Okay? The doctrine of the Trinity is very close. Hear me clearly. The doctrine of the Trinity is very, very close, and is the closest to the correct view of God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Of all the, uh, I haven't explained to you what the original doctrine is yet, but I want you to understand, don't leave the doctrine of Trinity just yet. It is not correct. It is not the original teaching, but there is 99% of the doctrine is already correct in the doctrine of Trinity. Unitarianism is way off. It's way, way worse. If I was to say, pick, uh, you need to just run away from the doctrine of Trinity and just go screaming and, you know, like your hair's on fire and just get away from the doctrine of Trinity, I'm not saying that because so much is correct with the doctrine of the Trinity. That if you were to run away from the doctrine of Trinity right now and go to Unitarianism, it's not the right way to go. Okay? I will I will explain the original doctrine in proper order. And I have this all mapped out, how I'm going to do it. This is the way it's going to go through. If you're impatient and you want to get my book already and you want to read it ahead of time and all that stuff, you can. You go to my website, begottengod.com. It's $10. I'm going to try to lower it to 99 cents because it's not selling, first of all, and second of all, um, I don't think I'm, uh, I, I don't want to um, hold it back from you if you guys want it, if it's too much. So, um, I'm not sure when I'm going to be able to do that, but I'm trying to do what I can right now with this video. So, stay with the Doctrine and Trinity, keep everything the same for now, okay? Um, and don't, don't leave and don't flee, don't go to Unitarian. That is not where you want to go. Okay? You have, if you're a Trinitarian, you have almost 99.9999% right. Okay? It's just a small, small change coming. But um, that's why the doctrine of Trinity uh, is accepted so widely. Because it answers so many questions. And it's pretty darn close. I'll admit, it is the closest. So, before we move on any further, uh, just I want to steer you away from the Unitarianism because that is not what the original church taught. Okay? It is not. There's so many problems with the doctrine of the Trinity. I'm sorry. Well, there's so many problems with the doctrine of the Trinity, but there's more problems with Unitarianism. More problems with Unitarianism than there is with the Trinity. So, stay with the Trinity for now. Um, don't make any radical changes. Um, Unitarianism, just to warn you off, is anything that says that Jesus is just a man. He was never anything. He never uh, lived or existed before Mary. Don't accept that. If anything, anybody says anything that Jesus did not exist before Mary, uh, before he was born in Mary, or before he was you know, assumed flesh, and, you know, all that. If it says anything like that, if it sounds anything like that, just throw it away. Just wait. Just wait. Okay? Everything needs to come in time. I need to give you all the right information in the right order with enough time in between for you to digest and understand what's going on and as we move on we will uh, examine everything slowly methodically and then once we're done you make your own decisions after that but i'm telling you what whatever you do i would not go to unitarian that's just me. okay stay where you're at don't move you know don't change anything don't go into any radical things Take your time, okay? Everything slowly and and, uh, and quietly and not out of order or with confusion, okay? So um, I want to appreciate I appreciate you guys watching the video. Um, share it. Um, 
do whatever you got to to let other people know. Uh, it may not take a year to finish this book. I mean, I'm going through little pieces, and I'm showing you here and there pieces. I'm not actually getting into the super uh, intricate details. I'm just going to give you what I can. Um, these videos are getting long. 51 minutes is amazing. So um, I'm not trying to take all your day. I apologize for being so long. But this is it's important, and I want to give it to you, and, uh, and, then, and then I can feel like I gave you what I've seen. And then after that, you can spit on my face. You know what I mean? It's, it's okay. I just want to give you what I see, and then after that, if you don't like it, or if you just don't believe it, or if it's not good enough evidence, then just at least I tried to say something. That's it. So have a great day. Thank you very much for uh, spending all this time with me. Uh, have a great week.